Tennis has a new Grand Slam champion, 22-year-old Yannick Sinner. Someone who's had a pretty unconventional journey to the top of the sport, as as he said in his winning speech, in his younger days, Yannick played many sports, and tennis didn't become his priority until he was 13 years old. And it's not like he was clearly better at tennis than the rest of the sports, as Yannick was one of the most talented skiers in Italy. And 13 years old is not that late, but you have to have in mind that you're gonna compete against kids that have been training pretty much their whole life and have competed at times for over 5 years. And Yannick until now had only been playing tennis for 2 days a week. But now he moved to the Piatti Tennis Center to train full time. Decision that like Yannick said was supported by his parents. He started training hard and the progress was there. But another very interesting decision by Yannick was made. Normally players aged 15 and 16 usually play many junior events because at those ages playing ITF future tournaments is normally not worth it because players there are taller, stronger, more experienced and if you're 15 or 16 they usually kick your ass. And it's very easy getting demoralized, getting many losses in a row. So playing against guys your age is the conventional route for the majority of players but not Yannick Sinner. Instead, he went directly into the futures, and guess what happened? Yup, players did kick Yannick's ass. But instead of getting demoralized, he kept training. And his mentality was, that if he was playing against players that have higher level than him, working hard, he would eventually get to that level. So it wasn't until January of 2018, with Yannick being 16 years old, where he finally would get his first main draw win. And 2018 would be a year of massive progress, as Yannick would start getting over these qualifying draws pretty consistently, and have good results at Futures this year. He started the year with his first ATP point, and already in August, he would make his first Futures final, where he lost pretty convincingly, but being a Futures finalist at age 16 is a very impressive result. Ending the year, Sinner was given a wildcard to play at the challenger of Andrea. In his first match, he would have to go against former top 50 Ilya Marchenko, a guy that was surely supposed to be levels above Yannick at this stage. But this wasn't the case, and displaying huge hitting, an incredible ease to hit deep consistent shots, and a very calm and collected attitude on the court, Sinner went toe to toe with Marchenko, finally losing 6-4 in the third set, but making people take notes that the name Yannick Sinner was surely someone that was worth taking a closer look and following his journey. And if 2018 had massive progress, 2019 was even crazier. In February, Sinner was given a wildcard to play at the Bergamo Challenger, and Sinner got his first Challenger win, and his second, and his third, and his fourth as well, and his fifth, and Sinner won the tournament. Yes, at 17 years old, this kid who apparently came from nowhere, went on to win the whole Challenger event. In only one year, Sinner went from playing like this, to playing like this. Chiude alla grande con un vincente. Altro vincente con il rovescio. Meraviglioso attacco con il dritto. His ground strokes were absolutely lethal. The depth that he was able to find consistently was something special. And at 17, he was already more powerful than the majority of the ATP Tour. The way Sinner smacked the tennis ball had many people talking about him. After winning the challenger, Sinner won two consecutive Futures events, proving that he was an absolute fire. And one month later came Yannick's first ATP event. Yannick lost in the second round of the qualifying draw, but then played the main draw as a lucky loser. And he took his opportunity and got his first ATP win against the Hungarian Valkuts. Another massive moment in his career, and his name at this point was very well heard around the tour, as not that many 17 year olds are able to get an ATP win nowadays. The progress Yannick was making was something special. After these results, Yannick received a wildcard to play the main draw of the Masters 1000 in Rome. Good luck for Yannick, he won another challenger event, this time at the United States, 
and one month later, he was able to go through the qualifying draw of the US Open, and he would play his first Grand Slam match against Stan Wawrinka. The matchup was as powerful as it can get, but a very experienced and informed Wawrinka, who by the way would take out Djokovic later in that tournament, would defeat Sinner in four tough sets. But the now 18-year-old Italian left a great image, as always an impeccable attitude on the court, and his ground strokes and sound of the ball when he hits it were something that left people amazed. Later that year, he made his first ATP semi-final, where he lost again against Stan Wawrinka. And if by this point the world knew about Yannick Sinner, in the next-gen ATP finals, that's when he would make his name very well known. Because being the youngest player at the event, and playing against the best players in the world under age 21, Sinner demolished his competition, including the world number 18 Alex Diminor, who could do nothing to stop Sinner in the final. Sinner had just destroyed the world number 18, playing some of the most aggressive and hard-hitting tennis you will see out there, gaining himself a reputation of being one of the hardest hitters in the tour. And yes, I say in the tour because Sinner ended the year as world number 78. A reminder, this guy had 0 ATP points at the start of 2018, and at the end of 2019, he is world number 78. His progress was something special. And now came 2020, which was quite a complicated year for everyone, and of course a Yannick that was carrying such momentum had to be stopped for many months, but still at the end of the year he was able to make some remarkable results. At this strange edition of Roland Garros, Sinner had his first top 10 win at a Grand Slam, at the fourth round against Alexander Zverev. His next match, he would encounter Rafael Nadal. And Sinner came out firing, putting himself a break up in the first set against the 12-time champion. But Nadal was able to come back in that first set and then win the match convincingly. Nonetheless, this was the best tournament of his career for Sinner. Quarterfinals of a Grand Slam, first top 10 win, and he went toe-to-toe -to -toe for a set against the legend Nadal in his favorite court. All of this at 19 years old. And his last tournament of 2020 at Sofia, Sinner would clinch his first ATP title, rising to world number 36. And 2021 would start with another ATP title. Two in a row, but the negative part, that's the thing, this kid was winning ATP titles, and physically he still had a lot of work to do, both in strength and resistance. But the potential was something scary. Two months later, Sinner would make his first Masters 1000 final. This came at Miami, where he lost the final against Hubert Hurkax. But again, another massive step in his career rising to world number 22. Next tournament, he would encounter the world number 1 Novak Djokovic, and the Serb dominated Sinner in that match, showing that he was a step forward in every play. But these are the type of matches where you can take so many lessons on the things that you need to improve on. At Roland Garros, he would again go against Rafael Nadal, and again Sinner would go a break up in the first set, but eventually lose the set, and then get dominated in the two sets after. So although his game was massive, he did show a little bit of lack of belief and experience in these big moments at Grand Slams. Later in the year, Sinner would win his first ATP 500. This came at Washington, defeating the surprise of the tournament, Mackenzie McDonald. After this result, Sinner was now number 15 in the world, getting closer and closer to the top 10. Later in the year, he would win titles in both Sofia and Antwerp, rising to world number 11 and playing at the ATP of Vienna, where he would reach the semi-finals, is when he finally would rise to world number 9. And Sinner would be the reserve at the Nito ATP finals, and he did have to play as Matteo Berrettini got injured in that edition. In his first match, he had to go against Hubert Hurkacz, and Sinner had his dream debut on home soil, destroying Hurkacz by 6-2 and 6-2. Unfortunately, it was now impossible for Sinner to classify for the semi-finals, even if he had won his first match. But he did play his second match against Daniel Medvedev, and the match ended up being an absolute thriller that Medvedev won in a third set tiebreak. But a great Nito ATP Finals debut for the young Italian, and a very good end to the season. But here came 2022, and at this point you wonder, where is the limit for Yannick Sinner? Many people see him as the future world number one. He's got the massive weapons, the consistency, the mentality, if he evolves his game and adds a little bit of variation, he's got everything to achieve it. Well, 2022 was the first season where Sinner would not make any progress in the rankings. A very disappointing loss at the Australian Open against Tsitsipas, 
where he got blown off the court, made Yannick take one of the most important decisions of his career, and that is break up with his coach, Ricardo Piatti, who had been alongside Yannick throughout pretty much his whole journey since he took tennis seriously. It's the man who owns the academy in which he played in, and a big reason not only for his progress, but also for many of the wildcards that he received back in the day, as Piatti has a big reputation as he's worked with several top 10 players of the tour, including Novak Djokovic. Well, after this loss, Sinner took the bold decision to break up with him, and weeks later he announced that his new coach would be Simone Vagnozzi, a former top 100 doubles player who had worked with other Italian players like Cecchinato or Travaglia, so he was experienced with other ATP players. Still, a very surprising event for many. Later in the year, in July, Darren Cahill, one of the biggest names in terms of coaching in tennis, a man that had worked with several former world number ones like Leighton Hewitt, Andre Agassi, Simona Halep, well this man joined Sinner's team, and the expectation after that was obviously massive. But 2022 came with some of the most heartbreaking losses for Sinner, an unfortunate injury at Roland Garros when he was leading against Andrei Rublev, a defeat to Novak Djokovic at Wimbledon when he was leading by two sets to love, and it ended up being Carlos Alcaraz, the man who defeated Sinner being a match point down and Sinner ended the year as world number 12, the first season of his career where he didn't make any progress in the rankings, and two extremely heartbreaking losses in Grand Slam. So at this point, yes, we know that Sinner has got massive weapons, but what is he lacking to actually go all the way in these big events? What can he work on with this incredible team that he's got around him? There were two main things that were talked about at this stage. One, the depth of his game, adding a little bit of variation, coming to the net, having a better slice, his serve was good but it could also be improved, adding a little bit more pace and first serve percentage, and overall being a more complete player. And the second one is the self-belief, because 2023 started with another heartbreaking loss in Grand Slam, another loss to Stefanos Tsitsipas, where Sinner lost the first two sets, but then came back with some amazing tennis and doubted himself in that fifth set which he would eventually lose by 6 games to 3. But it's these massive moments in Grand Slams where Sinner lacked that self-belief. When you watch Carlos Alcaraz for example, you can tell he backs himself in these moments. And even if he misses, you know it wasn't because he didn't believe in himself. But Sinner on the other hand, did lack this trust in himself in these big moments against other top players. The first part of 2023 would see some good consistent results that would put Sinner in the top 10 again, but after a surprising loss at the French Open, the second part of the season would be huge for Sinner. Semi-finals at Wimbledon, his first Masters 1000 title at Toronto, a title that would give the feeling that pieces were finally getting together and Sinner was becoming more and more consistent, and after winning his first Masters 1000, you had the feeling like he was now truly a Grand Slam contender, that this title would give him that self-belief that he needed to make that big step in a Grand Slam. Your top 10, your Masters 1000 champion, you're becoming a more complete and consistent player, more experienced, like I say, all the pieces were getting together. After, and after this tournament is where Sinner said, I said I feel invisible. Title at Beijing defeating Alcaraz and Medvedev, title at Vienna defeating Rublev and Medvedev, and in the Nito ATP finals is where you could absolutely tell he was ready for anything. Defeating a Novak Djokovic that was on a 19 match winning streak, and the most important thing, even above his game, is how well he played those important moments, how well he handled the pressure, and he defeated Djokovic in a third set tiebreak, something extremely difficult to do. He then beat Rune and Medvedev again to classify for the final, but Djokovic was able to get revenge over him. The level of Djokovic in that final was astonishing. Nonetheless, an extremely positive tournament for Sinner, getting some huge wins over top players. He then played at the Davis Cup, where in the semi-finals he would meet Djokovic again, and another victory for Sinner in another tight three-setter, another victory that could give him huge confidence going forward. And he destroyed Dimonor in the Davis Cup finals, clinching the Davis Cup title for Italy, an incredible end to the 2023 season, where Yannick would end as world number 4, with many of the fellow players saying that they had the feeling that Sinner would very possibly climb to the world number 1 spot very soon. He had just that feeling playing that he was ready, every part of his game and his mind. And what can I say about this 2024 Australian Open? It was the exact proof that he was absolutely ready, destroying everyone in his road to the semi-finals, 
beating Djokovic in a semi-final, where the sub had a horrible start to the match, and Sinner quickly dominated by two sets to love, but against many other players, when he clinched that third set, so many of them would have panicked, and he would have been able to come back, not against a Sinner that was now full of confidence, and delivered a super consistent performance, not giving Djokovic a single break point in the whole match. A stat that was never seen before in a Grand Slam, which also talks volumes about the improvement in Sinner's serve. And the final was quite surprising, because with a Medvedev that reached the final, with an insane amount of hours on his legs, you would think that Sinner has the upper hand and he would defeat him in three or four sets. But the Russian completely surprised everyone, coming out with a super aggressive game plan, which we're not used to seeing from him, and in the first two sets he completely outplayed Sinner, but with a little dip in the Russian's aggression level, Sinner was able to stay calm, composed, and come back in the next three sets to clinch his first Grand Slam title, again showing that level of maturity and self-belief that he had been building over the past year. The first of what I'm sure will be many Grand Slams for a player that has everything to reach the top of the sport. Let's see, because many people are saying that they wouldn't be surprised if this is a Federer 2004 type of season, or even Djokovic in 2011, where suddenly a top player just steps up and becomes invincible. I'm not sure about that. I think there's so many great players right now that it's really difficult to win three or four Grand Slams in a year, but I think there's no doubt that Sinner is gonna have a magnificent season where he very probably at some point clinched that number one spot. So, this was the incredible rise of Yannick Sinner. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If that's the case, make sure you give it a thumbs up, which helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you would like to enjoy more tennis content of this style, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Let me know in the comments what do you think will be Sinner's ranking at the end of 2024. I will be taking a close look. That's it, I hope I can see you in my next video. Peace!